Hey guys, welcome to Easy Programming, an initiative for a common man to learn programming. It has been seen that people think programming is just for professionals. It is not the business of the amateurs, but it's a wrong myth because everyone can learn programming through hard work and practice. Easy programming is an initiative as it now suggests that it's an initiative for a common man to learn programming. If you are not in an institute, you can learn programming. You have the right to learn the programming. And this is our mission and vision. So in this initiative we will teach you some of the languages C language some web languages desktop languages so in this tutorials I will teach you C language okay let's talk something about C language C language is the basic language if you have the grip on C language you can understand any programming language this series of lecture will guide you how to learn C programming and if you learn this programming tool very carefully believe me you will be able to play with every language to develop every kind of program so let's come to this lecture lecture number one C language tutorials in this lecture we will cover these contents program execution flowchart header files statement terminators variables naming conventions keywords built-in functions don't be panic it's not a rocket science it is very simple if you are alert if you have the potential to learn and if you are committed to learn the new tools and the languages so let's start our first content is program execution flowchart what does it mean it means that how a C program executes in the machine machine means your computer system okay let's see this is the first part of the execution that is editor editor means a software or a tool in which you write your code there are some editors available in the market and they are freely available one of them is dev c++ and other is turbo c turbo c is an old version it is not as much smart and advanced as the dev c++ so i recommend you to use dev c++ because it supports more functionalities and features as compared to Turbo C++ this is the Dev C++ you can download it from internet and this is the basic compiler ok next step is compiler Compiler is also a program which compiles your code, which checks error in your code and which prepares your code to run on the machine. This is the most important part in the execution flowchart, compiler. In the next step, here comes linker. 
linker links your files that is your source code with the libraries available in the compiler you can say that it links your inside code with the outside libraries the built-in functionalities will be invoked in your code the next step is execution execution means that program is about to run but execution will be invoked if the code is error free compiler checks this condition and all the libraries are linked with your code and then it will execute your code this is the program execution flowchart compiler linker and execution is not our headache we are concerned with editor because here we have to write our code here we have to specify our rules here we have to be very much specific in the coding the compiler linker and execution is done by the softwares like dev c++ and turbo c okay the things to remember while programming in every age you should be very much sure about the basic concepts of the programming if you grab the concepts you can play with every language you can make anything using these programming concepts the second thing is syntax syntax will show you that your program is correct or incorrect we can say syntax is a rule book you have to be very much careful about the syntax of this language some of the languages have different syntaxes but you are very much careful about this word syntax it means that how to write the program how to deal with the program the next step is what to do and where to do for example you are facing a problem you have a problem to program it so first thing is what to do and what to do is linked with where to do if both things are clear what to do and where to do you can write every program and the fourth main point is do not invent the wheel again it means that if is if a thing is predefined it is predetermined don't try to make it again use the libraries use the code written by the professional developers it is for your convenience and the main thing is note how to do is an an issue because it all depends on your intellectual skills and practice if you have a problem and you are very much clear about these three points basic concepts syntaxes where to do and what to do then how to do is and an issue it will be solved using your intellectual skills your logic and the practice practice makes a man perfect this is a universal truth so it is very important practice and hard work okay the next thing our first topic 
header files what are actually a header file header file is a library file it means that library file are the predefined code written by the professional developers for your convenience you will use the library files in your program for your perfection in the code and the reusability of the code second thing is predefined commands header files are the predefined commands they are written by the professional developers they are the functions that are written in the same language in a form of header file header file is said to be a bundle it's very important to use the header files in your code it is just for your convenience okay the next question is where to include header files where to include i'll show you on the compiler this is dev c++ compiler and how to install it and how to use it we will learn in the next lectures i am showing you just these things not the use of this compiler it is another topic in the coming lectures these are the header files this one and this one header file is actually this stdio.h and the coneo.h these are the header files these are the library files these are written in advance okay these are the header files where to include the header files include in the start of every program your first line will be a header file and rest of the header files will be included right after these files for example if you have to include a third header file like include mass.h this is another header file you have to include the header file in the start of the program okay guys syntax for the header files this is the main thing syntax you have to be very much careful about the syntax if the syntax is not clear and the syntax contains a mistake the program will not be executed syntax for a header file let's see here you have to specify a hash sign in start it tells the compiler that this is the header file the compiler starts checking this from here this is the first hash sign it means that it will contain a header file if you will not specify a hash sign the compiler will not consider it a header file and it will show you a message and the program will not be executed so in start you have to place a hash sign right include include means you are going to include a header file include place the less than sign and the greater than sign this is the syntax of the header file and the name of the header file will be written in these brackets like stdio dot h or coneo dot h the concept of the header file 
will be very much clear in the next lecture as we will proceed in these languages so this is the first thing next move to the next point these are the examples stdio.h conio.h and mass.h dot h extension shows that it is a header file it is extension of a header file like we have extension here pptx that is the extension for powerpoint slides we have the extension doc it is extension for the microsoft word document so these this is the header files and stdio and conio means stdio means standard input output conio means console input output match.h means mathematics library it has all the functions of mathematics it has all the functions of standard input output standard input output means the input and output using keyboard conio means the console console is your screen okay next statement terminator what is a statement terminator as it names is a terminator it terminates the statement what is the role of the statement terminator in your program the statement terminator is this semicolon this is the statement terminator a semicolon what is the role it tells the compiler that it is a one statement a statement is followed by a semicolon this is statement terminator means that this is the statement terminator of this statement printf welcome to www.niapsoft.com this is our website if you will not specify the statement terminator the compiler will show you an error the statement terminator missing here you will see that i have specified statement terminator after each statement look at these this is a statement terminator this is a statement terminator but remember don't place the statement terminator after the header files it is wrong it is a syntax error just place it after a statement this is not a statement what is this i will show you and i will tell you in detail in the next lectures but today's concern is about these statements statement terminator so try to remember that place the statement terminator right after every statement okay no okay. error if it is not used the compiler will show you the error statement terminator missing and stop the execution of the program the program will not be successfully executed okay the next thing what is variables variables name suggests that its value varies it, its value can be changed during the execution of the program variable stores the value and use it in the program and it has the ability to update its value as the program execution proceeds this is a basic concept of variables variable can store different kind of values okay the role of variable i have mentioned that it is used to store the values and to use the values in the program Okay, how to use the variables? Let's see in the compiler.
दिस इज अ वेरिएबल ए दिस इज अ वेरिएबल ए वॉट इज दिस एंड एंड इज अ डेटा टाइप आई विल शो यू द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डेटा टाइप इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर बट टूडे इज कंसर्न इज अबाउट दिस ए दिस इज अ वेरिएबल यू कैन चेंज दिस नेम यू कैन जस्ट चेंज दिस नेम बाय वेरी इट इज ऑल्सो अ वेरिएबल नेम it can store the value and its value can be updated during the execution of the program okay the declaration of a variable to declare a variable remember you must declare a variable before it is used in your program it must be declared right after these lines int main these brackets and these curly braces right after this you have to specify your variable here not in the coming lines this is wrong to place the variable here it's simply wrong you have to specify the variable name in the start of this main function this is the function sign of function these are the advanced topics we will cover in the next lecture so these are the variable names you can specify more than one variable you can just specify in a you can specify in b these are we are right your variables you can declare as many variable as it is needed okay what is the declaration means see here this is simply a declaration of a variable you have to specify a data type here this is the data type part this is the variable name part this is the variable name part and this is the denominator most important map this to this line int int is a data type integer value is the name of the variable and this is a statement terminator in this way you will declare your variable okay what is the initialization of the variable let's see initializing mean that you will give a value to the variable by simply specifying this equal sign and a value let's see how you can initialize this variable by the value 9 you can specify this variable by this 28975 and in this syntax we can say place this equal sign and this is the value of variable so this is the value of the variable map this to this statement let's see four this is the value of the variable and this is the equal sign it is called assignment operator 
it assigns the value written on the right side of the sign equals it gives this value to this variable in this example we can say that 4 is assigned to the variable named value 9 is assigned to the variable name a this is the initialization of your variable assignment of values to a variable as we have already seen that assignment is done with this assignment operator on the left side of the operator you have to specify the variable name and on the right side of the variable you have to specify the value of the variable and this assignment operator plays the role to assign the value to the variable name next is naming convention legal variable names as I mentioned in the start that compiler has some rules what is the legal variable names the legal variable names mm, these are the legal variable names you can write any alphabet like A like B like C like this variable like Alan this is a variable Henry this is a variable you can mix this variable name with an alphabet with a digit for example Symphony 5 this is a variable name legal variable name. H2O this is a variable name like Steve 6 John this is a variable name you are free to specify the variable name but there are some constraints Okay, let me tell you one thing more. You can specify underscore data. It's a variable name. Underscore place. It's a variable name. You can specify a underscore before the variable name. It is legal. You can underscore between these variable names like data underscore name this is a variable name this is a variable name but this is not a variable name dot data this is not a variable name you cannot spy specify any special character like dot and at the rate sign this sign these are illegal they cannot be used inside this variable name they, they cannot be used these are not legal all of them are illegal if you will use these the compiler show you the error message this is the naming convention you must be very much careful about these conventions because these are the part of the syntax and good naming conventions good naming conventions are not necessary but as a professional I will teach you that this is a basic thing because after one year or two year you will be not aware of the variable name because if you write a program on July 2012 you know that what will this variable a but after two or three years you will not remember that why this variable is used 
what is the role of this variable a in this program you have to check all the program but if you write it smartly you will know why it is used like if you are calculating the salary you can specify the name int salary int the salary means that this variable is used for the salary calculation and int means that it is of type integer it is not type of a character and a float it is a type integer underscore is legal if you are recording an age you can specify int age or you can write employee age and it means that this variable will deal with employee and it says and it is type of integer this is a good naming convention it is not necessary but it's a good practice so i advise you to follow these instructions okay what are keywords as i told you that header files are the built in files and keywords are written in these header files their implementation their code their usage is mentioned in the header files keyword is called a reserved word as well so what is a keyword i tell you this int is a keyword integer it is predefined that what is integer what is the code behind this but you are not concerned with this you just have to remember the name integer is int and you just know that this is a data type this is and this a reserved word and you have to use it in your program simple what to do and where to do how to do is not your concern how to do is the concern of the developer the developer of the compiler and this it is a reserved word return is a reserved word so how you will recognize that it is a return return is a keyword or not is it a return is it a is a word or not i'll show you in this this is the compiler turbo c okay let's play with this compiler new save as test 1 dot c okay this is the name maximize it write the same code in this compiler as well
okay guys this is a good compiler as if you want to understand the keywords and the syntaxes let's see the green line shows that these are the header files if you remove this sign hey sign it will not be highlighted it, the compiler is not taking this line as a header file if you will specify a hash sign it shows you that this is a header file the words in white color are the reserved words these are the keywords like int here it is int it is written all of them are reserved words keywords they have predefined meanings they have predefined code specified in the compiler you just have to use these variables you just have a solid you just have to use these keywords but let's see here int is not treated as reserved word here it is treated as a variable name because if a reserved word is written in combination with any of the letter it is considered as a variable you just need to write the reserved word and space specify a space between the reserved word and the variable name these are the reserved words what are the examples let's see the examples hint is a reserved word what is a reserved word if is a reserved word else is a reserved word for is a reserved word these are the reserved words switch is a reserved word return is a reserved word but if a word is not reserved it will be shown in clean letter like harry it is not a reserved word it is in clean so reserved word all of them have predefined meanings with the passage of time i will teach you about each and every reserved word okay what is built in function built-in functions are also concerned with the header files they are also mentioned they are also specified in the header files the code behind these header functions are specified in the header files built-in functions are the function provided by the language to use why to use built-in function the built-in function is printf. It is specified in the stdio.h. What is the code behind this printf? You should not be panicked about this. If you are concerned with the use of printf, get character get cf is also a built-in function specified in the corner.h printf function is used to print a string on the console in this compiler we see that printf is a is a word printf is a built-in function so function is the syntax of a function is function name followed by these brackets 
they can be empty they contain a string or something else depending upon this function name and functionality this is a function get ch is a function because it is followed by these brackets main is a function because the, it is followed by these brackets printf is a function because of these brackets you can specify a string in this these are the functions built in functions there are some user defined function as this is an advanced topic i will teach you in the upcoming lectures the syntax is defined so here we will use the concept do not even the field again you should not be panic about the print type and its construction you should be aware of the use of the print type and this is the example i have shown you so now i will show you the execution of this remove all the actual lines this is a simple program how to run this before executing it i tell you this line i told you that we have to write a code in editor we have written it then we have to compile this then we have to link it then we have to execute it let's see the code is ready in this editor we have to compile it execute compile status is done it means that zero errors and zero warnings it is code free error so now compile is ready when we will press this button run this will link these header files with these functions it is the responsibility of the linker let's see run this is the console we have written our first code let's see these are the header files this is the main function this is the printf statement this is the string we want to display welcome to www.nyapsoft.com these are these helping functions why we have used them this is another topic I'll teach you why we have placed this main function here. It is all in the next lecture. This is the output screen. This is the name test1.exe, our file name. This is test.c. This is executable file that it is successfully executed. This is a string. So this is the output of your first program okay this was all about this lecture in the next lecture we will cover the data types the installation of the compiler the first language c language sample program in which i will tell you the use of the main function the return statement the get character function and some of the rules to write your program and the common programming errors and how to overcome these errors so the next lecture will be important and it will teach you how to write the program in C language so that was all about this lecture and thank you for your patience and thank you for your watching please leave us comments and subscribe us 
post your comments we want your appreciation we want your feedback so that we can improve our style and something we can do for you thank you for your patience and thank you for the watching